just for a few seconds. Just for a few seconds. And then he turned around and he looked at me. And he said, I'm hungry. You want to go for lunch? And I said, sure. I said, we can go for lunch. But I said, I thought you invited me here to pray for rain. And this is when he turned and looked at me. And what he said changed my life. It changed my perspective and the way I think about my relationship to the world. I'm going to share it with you. Maybe it will change yours as well. Here's what he said. I said, I thought you prayed for rain. And he said, no. He said, if I prayed for rain, rain could never happen. Because the moment we ask for something to happen in this world, in the asking for, we are affirming that it does not exist now. I invite you to think about that. When we ask the universe for something, we are implying that whatever we're asking for, or asking about, or asking to appear, or asking to happen, is not present in the moment. And in that way, we are actually affirming in the field the very thing that we were hoping to change. I hope that makes sense. The quantum field that we talked about in the last episode, if you recall, it is the container for all things. It is the bridge between us and the world, between what happens in here and what happens out there. And it is the mirror in our world for what we claim to be true in our hearts. So if you think about that, it makes perfect sense. If you're asking for rain, as I thought my friend David was going to do, if he asks that, then the field interprets that as him asking for no rain, because, because the rain's not there. So I looked at him and I said, David, if you didn't pray for rain right now, what did you just do? And he said, when I closed my eyes, he said, I felt the feeling as if the rain has already happened. I felt the feeling of what it feels like, he said, to stand in my Pueblo village with my naked feet in the mud. And the mud is there because there's been so much rain. He said, I smelled the smells of what it smells like when the rain rolls off the earthen walls of our Pueblo homes. He said, I felt the feeling of what it feels like when I walk through the fields of corn that are this high against my naked chest and they're this high because there's been so much rain. He said, I felt the feeling of what it feels like when my prayer is already answered. And then I gave thanks for what has already happened. He said, in those few seconds, I felt the feelings and I gave thanks for the rain that has already occurred. This is a very, very powerful story to me. And it illustrates a quantum principle. Because there is a huge difference between working toward an outcome and beginning as if the outcome is already present. I invite you to think about that. When I was a young boy growing up, in a rural community in northern Missouri. Uh, I spent a lot of time working in a farm environment, in a rural environment, baling hay, mending fences, training bird dogs, feeding cows, all those kinds of things. I get cuts and bruises on my hands, my legs all the time. I remember my mom would always say to me, and it was very well intentioned, but she'd say the healing will happen slowly over a long period of time. She said, it'll heal a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, a little bit the next day, until pretty soon it's all gone. And if we embrace that, if we think that way, if we accept that, that is precisely the way the healing happens. This is a linear way of thinking about the world. And I'm not saying it's right, wrong, good, or bad, because there are times in our lives we definitely want to think linear, okay? Definitely want to think linear. When you're, when you're putting together, if you're working on a, 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 an assembly line, at an auto factory, and you're putting together the car that I might drive <laughs> later in that year, I want you to be linear. I want you to do everything step by step by step, working toward the goal. When the scientists designed the space shuttle to take, or, or the Apollo capsules to take a, a human to the moon and back, it was a linear process, step by step, each one building on the last. So I'm making a distinction here. There are times, there are times when it's good to think linear and good to, to act in a linear way. But we have just discovered, science is telling us, we are not bound 
by the linear laws of physics as we know them today. And that we have the ability to be in both worlds. And when it comes to our healing, there's a huge difference between working toward the healing and coming from the outcome that the healing has already happened. Or, in the case of my friend David, coming from the outcome that the rain has already appeared. Well, we went into the nearest town, Taos, New Mexico. We had lunch that day. And by the time I came back onto my property later that afternoon, something began to happen that we had not seen for a very long time. Big black clouds were rolling in over the Sangre de Cristo mountains. And it started to rain that afternoon. And it rained and rained and rained. It rained all afternoon. It rained all night. It rained all the next morning. It was a mess. There was so much rain. The roads were flooded. The fields were flooded. Cattle were stranded. Crops that remained were ruined because the ground had been so dry it couldn't accept all the rain. And I called my friend David on the phone. And I said, David, this is a mess. I said, what in the world is going on? I said, it has rained since I saw yesterday afternoon. It hasn't stopped. And he was quiet just for a moment. And then he said to me on the phone, he said, Greg, that's the part of the prayer that the elders could never describe to me. They couldn't tell me how to stop the rain. They told me how to get it started, but I never learned how much to make and when to tell it to stop. So I'm sharing this story now for a couple of reasons. Now, one of those reasons is because I cannot say to you as a scientist, I cannot prove as a scientist that David's prayer had anything to do with the rain that happened. I have to say that there is a high correlation, a high correlation between the time that prayer was offered and when the rain happened, a rain that had not happened in that way for five years previous. We have to say as a scientist, there's a high correlation because science is not at the place yet where they can embrace the mechanism, the cause and the effect. Well, I watched the news that night in that part of New Mexico. We're able to pull in the TV stations from parts of Colorado, southern Colorado, and parts of northern New Mexico. And I remember the weatherman on the Colorado station, uh, and he showed the weather map, and he showed a low-pressure system coming across northern Colorado, and right about the time of Denver, this low-pressure system dropped and made a loop right around northern New Mexico where we were and came right back up, and that low pressure is what brought the rain. Now, I remember the weatherman. He stepped back and he looked at that very unusual looking pattern where the, 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 the pressure system just dropped. And all he said was, huh, that was all he said because he couldn't explain what was happening. So I'm sharing this with you from a perspective of everyday life, indigenous traditions, what they have learned in their lives and how they apply quantum principles without using that term in a very real way in their lives.